excited. This is the Red Sea 360 in association with Winston Baker, and I'm Amy Baker from Winston Baker. I'm the CEO and co-founder, and we are thrilled to have you all with us today. We're thrilled to be here in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and to be working with the Red Sea International Film Festival. So thank you so much. Um, just so you're aware, one of our speakers will be speaking French, so if you need a translation device, they're in the back, and then you would just put it, set it to English. And um, I, I, I'll do an introduction so you have time, no worries. So now we're going to do Show Me the Soft Money. So we're going to explore incentives in different regions around the world. And moderating this session is a dear friend of mine, Janice Kovach. And she's been a speaker before, but a really fun fact about her is that she was elected mayor, so she's also a mayor, in 2011, and she's been re-elected for two more terms, so I think that's pretty cool. But currently, she's also the commissioner in New Jersey of the Motion Picture and Television Commission. So Janice, please come to the stage. Welcome, everyone, and thank you so much, Amy. It's a pleasure to be here. It is a pleasure to be um, a part of the Red Sea and the Winston Baker uh, Conference. So it is, I'm excited. If I, Panelists, if you could join me. Our names are all listed, so you can, yeah. our chair. All right, so I'm just going to ask each of them to give a little introduction of themselves, and then we'll get into a Q&A. So Hans, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Happy to be here. My name is Hans Fraken. I'm the Abu Dhabi Film and Television Commissioner. Uh, before this, I was the Quebec Film and Television Commissioner in Canada, so dealing a lot with soft money, incentives, everything we're going to talk about. Before that, I was the head of International Telefilm Canada, which is funding as opposed to subsidies, and then before that with 20th Century Fox. Hello, good afternoon everyone. My name is Abdeljaleel Nasser. I'm the General Manager of Sector Development and Investment Attraction at the Saudi Film Commission. Uh, we have actually started at the Film Commission with a, a, a mission to actually build an entire sector, film sector in Saudi Arabia that is sustainable, healthy, uh, to position Saudi Arabia as the hub of filmmaking in the Middle East. Uh, before that, I have shot, directed, produced, so uh, our understanding of the creative cycle is something that we'd like to bring to the table whenever we build anything in the Film Commission because we want the environment to be by filmmakers to filmmakers. So thank you. Pleasure to be here. Bonjour, c'est Germain Colli. Je suis le directeur de la cinématographie au ministère de la Culture et du Patrimoine Historique du Sénégal. Et je suis là. Je représente également le fonds de promotion à l'industrie cinématographique et audiovisuelle, un fonds de l'État du Sénégal et qui est logé dans ma direction, qui s'occupe de la politique cinématographique de l'état du Sénégal et je voudrais dire tout le plaisir que j'ai à être ici avec vous et je remercie vraiment tous les organisateurs du Red Sea Film Festival de me donner l'opportunité de pouvoir échanger avec vous mais d'être là tout simplement pour explorer toutes les opportunités en tout cas qui s'offrent à nous dans ce monde d'aujourd'hui. Merci. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Khair um, I'm Mohanad Bakri. I'm the uh, managing director of the Royal Film Commission Jordan. Uh, I'm one of the lucky people that uh, started this uh, commission in 2000, and uh, it, it was established 2003 and operating 2005. I uh, headed the uh, capacity building department, which is the training uh, component. Uh, then. Uh, Later, later on, I, I moved to work at one of the film institutes in Jordan, uh, worked uh, at the NYU Abu Dhabi uh, for almost five years, and then came back as a managing director of the Royal Film Commission. 
Hi everyone, uh, my name is Per Erik Gilsvik. Uh, I'm from Oslo, Norway, uh, and I'm the project manager of Surfon, the Norwegian South Film Fund. Um, I'm also a festival programmer, and I'm uh, the festival director of Oslo Arab Film Days. Um, yeah, thank you for having me, and uh, thanks to the festival. Thank you very much. Um, so just to get an understanding of who's in the room, Producers, independent producers? Any sales and distribution? Filmmakers? Everyone's looking for money. And free money. Um, you know, I, I just want to share a quote with you. So a very dear friend of mine, Michael Uslin, has a number of books, for those of you that were here and heard him speak. Um, he has a book, Batman's Batman. And this is something that stuck with me. There's no viable movie, no viable project, no viable pitch unless it comes from the passion of the producer and only if that passion is ably and sincerely communicated to the financial and distribution sources as well as to the talent needed to come aboard. That's the starting point. And I'm sure all of you are coming here with your passion for your projects. But I think what we really want to kind of focus on today is giving you an overview of, of what does soft money mean? You know, what are the different types of soft money? What are the incentives, grants, and government programs that are out there? And Hans, I think you were going to give us kind of a 30,000 foot view. Right. So, um, I mean, you know, everybody's after money. So, yes. You know, free money is the best. Always. But usually money has a cost. And if you have to, uh, in the film production industry, if, or I mean any type of screened entertainment production industry, if you have to break it down, really there's three levels of financing. Studio, private, and government. So studio financing is Hollywood Studios, uh, streamers, Canal Plus. Uh, you know, it, it's a production, it's usually a... a a production entity that also finances or co-finances. So in Abu Dhabi, for example, it's a, it's a studio called Image Nation. Um, and basically, studio financing is usually an equity deal, but the counterpart is they own part of your IP, or a distribution deal, and that's usually on a minimum guarantee where they pay you a certain amount of money to contribute to the financing of the project in exchange for distribution rights. Independent financing, especially in the United States, but more and more around the world, and we're seeing it more and more in Bollywood and India now, is, is you know, high net worth individuals, dentists, business guys, whatever, or companies who finance or lend against uh, you know, a certain percentage of the profit plus an interest rate. So that can be gap financing, completion bonding, all that stuff. And then in the third part, the government side, which is where we're, what we're here to talk about, Usually it's kind of divided into hard, hard money and soft money. We're here to talk about the soft money, but the hard money is basically film funding programs. So when I was, when I was heading Telefilm Canada, we are the Canadian film funding agency. So we're, we're, we're giving equity to a project, not expecting anything in return. It, it's not an investment. It's, a, it's, a, it's a, not a donation either, but... <laughs> It's you know funding in the culture of that country, whereas that's hard that's hard money. Where soft money is what we call tax credits or cash rebates, is where um, the government is giving you a percentage of what you spend in that jurisdiction. Except for a few exceptions like London and Georgia, normally it's exclusively what you spend in that jurisdiction. So. That's really a very 30,000 foot level overview of how you finance any type of screen entertainment production. Thank you. Abdul Jalil, uh, talk a little bit about the projects that you've worked with recently. Well, in, in Saudi Arabia, we have, uh, we have a commitment to actually build us, uh, you know, a film industry in the country. Mm. And, uh, and that includes building the entire value chain from the moment an idea is born in someone's mind all the way until its completion and distribution. Uh, recently, we have had a couple of projects that have been extremely successful in the country. Uh, there was a big project, which is uh, 100 million plus, that was shot entirely in the country, a Desert Warrior. Uh, it was shot uh, over the course of, I think, uh, 50 days. Uh, it was shot in the north of Saudi Arabia, particularly in the area of Neom. 
and we had also another project which called Qandahar, starring Gerard Butler. It was shot in Al-Ula, in Jeddah, and in small parts of the country. Uh, those two were shot at the heart of the pandemic, where the whole world was not doing anything. We were busy uh, trying to enable those filmmakers to shoot their films. Uh, now, the incentives was a vehicle to attract these projects, but it was not the only thing, because what we provide also is a world-class logistic support on the ground. We understand that the creative process in itself is hard. It's not really easy to create a project, it's not easy to go and finance it, and it's not easy to execute it. And we don't want to add another hurdle of bureaucracy, having to deal with different governmental entities. The coordination between all the governmental entities in the country is, uh, is great. And, and it was shown on the ground. In fact, you know, the producers of some of these projects came back and they said, we would love to shoot all of our future projects here, uh, but we understand that some stories may dictate that they go to certain places in the world and we respect that, but other than that, it was really, really a great experience. Now, uh, since the launch of our incentive program in Cannes last May, uh, we had seen a flux of interest from all over the world. We are processing now over 100 projects that are applying uh, to the incentives, 50% uh, of them are local projects. So the Saudi filmmakers are aware of the financing streams that are available. Um, and we are really looking forward just to continue the same level of support financially and logistically to all creative projects that are interested to shoot in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Jermaine, some of the, um, the projects you've worked on, what's some advice that you give as new filmmakers may come to you and ask you about what their opportunities may be? Oui, merci. Merci bien. Je, ce, ce que je voudrais dire que le fond dont dispose euh, le Sénégal, le FOPICA, Fonds de promotion à l'industrie cinématographique et audiovisuelle, est un fonds qui a été mis en place par l'État. Euh, l'État du Sénégal pour développer la cinématographie au niveau local déjà en investissant sur toute la chaîne de production. Euh, nous accompagnons les producteurs sous forme de subvention au niveau du développement du film déjà avec ce qu'on appelle l'aide au développement qui permet à un porteur de projet de, de le développer davantage en, en, en explorant en tout cas tout ce qui fera que son projet soit viable. Nous intervenons au, net, au niveau de euh, la production avec des subventions euh, qui s'appellent euh, aide à la production. Nous intervenons également au niveau de la post-production, mais c'est toute la chaîne et de la formation surtout euh, où nous intervenons pour permettre à notre pays d'avoir euh, les ressources humaines de qualité, en tout cas, pour pouvoir travailler. Parce que ailleurs, nous travaillons, nous insistons sur les coproductions. Nous développons beaucoup d'accords de coproduction avec des pays. Et c'est ce qui permet que les pays qui ne sont pas, qui sont des pays avec qui nous avons des, des accords de coproduction, les producteurs issus de ces pays-là peuvent venir euh, solliciter également ce fonds-là en essayant de travailler en relation avec les producteurs qui sont au Sénégal. Euh, il y a bon nombre de pays, que ce soit en Afrique, en Europe. Euh, nous sommes même en train de discuter avec l'Arabie Saoudite pour voir comment aller vers des accords de coopération cinématographique et même aller au-delà avec des accords de coproduction. Mon ministre aura, aura un entretien avec son homologue saoudien dans les jours à venir pour pouvoir fixer. Nous sommes en train de travailler sur les documents techniques. Mais le fonds sénégalais, il est, il est ouvert. Il est ouvert et nous avons euh, d'autres partenariats, nous lions des relations avec d'autres fonds pour pouvoir mutualiser et permettre aux producteurs de bénéficier de ça. Ce n'est pas vraiment les producteurs sénégalais qui peuvent bénéficier de ce fonds-là. Les producteurs étrangers peuvent bénéficier de ce fonds à la seule condition qu'ils travaillent avec un producteur sénégalais, comme cela se fait dans beaucoup de pays. Voilà. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mohanad, um, you have recently had a, uh, a partnership. It was an EU for 2 million euros. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? Um, yes, if I may just go one step back and say that um, 
the 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 film industry as hans mentioned it's all about uh, about money and partnerships also it is about what available as an infrastructure from um, filmmakers from people who are in the industry and the knowledge and the the uh, uh, culture that, that that they have uh, through through what we do th uh, at the film uh, commission our our aim is not only to attract uh, projects to come to to the country in film but also we do have a film fund that, that, that will be um, um, giving opportunities for the Jordanians and Arabs in co-production to, to make their films. The, uh, la the, the example that you, you mentioned, it is a, a project that uh, we wanted to uh, explore also the co-production with, with, with Europe, and especially when we have this, this uh, uh, um, closeness of Europe to, 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 to the country, to Jordan. Lots of stories are uh, Jordan being, being part of it as a back, backdrop for uh, regional, regional stories. Uh, it was a convincing uh, case for, uh, uh, for us to, to, to be able to have such a, such a fund and such uh, uh, an opportunity. However, I go, I go back again, it always goes to, to the, uh, to the um, uh, finance as a, as a as a film commission, we also work hard on developing talents, and this is the core value of uh, of Jordan as a country. Uh, we've been we've been successful to attract so many pro projects to 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 Jordan, and especially when we're talking about big Hollywood uh, uh, productions, not in terms only of spending in the country, but also giving back to the local local crew. Oh, absolutely, and that is so important. Um, the seeing projects come into a community and finding how they benefit, not just the the project that's coming in, but the community that they're they're spending money and they're in becoming a part of where they're filming. Absolutely. And Per, you have a fund as well, but it's not specific to just Norway. No, um, on uh, sort of in contrast to uh, some of the others here in the panel, Norway maybe sticks out as well because we're far from the region geograph uh, geographically. But um, I run a fund called the Norwegian South Film Fund, and it's basically state money uh, from our Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, it's uh, labeled as cultural aid, so it's a fund that uh, is open for filmmakers from 85 different countries of the MENA region, Middle East. Uh, Africa, Latin America, and Asia, and some parts of the uh, Balkan in Europe, Eastern Europe. Uh, we do production support, um, and uh, it's yeah quite beneficial for you guys because you don't have to come to Norway, we don't have spending requirements, but you do need a Norwegian co-producer. Uh, so the whole idea of our fund, uh, the overall objective, is to try and help out filmmakers in countries and regions where yeah, politics and economic situation makes it more difficult to realize film projects. Thank you. And Hans, you talked a little bit, when you talked about the 30,000 foot, you talked about the exceptions. Do you want to expand on them a little bit? Yeah, so, um, so when it comes to soft money, um, it happens at three government levels. National level, state or provincial or emirate level, and, re and um, you know, municipal, m municipal, municipal regional level so uh, country level national level is like Canada has a, a national tax credit which is good across the country France has a national tax credit and then state is like so for example United States does not have a national tax credit it doesn't exist <clears throat> and there's reasons why which I can explain so in the United States it's at a state level so Georgia has a tax credit, Louisiana, New Mexico, Arizona, New York, New Jersey. And then, um, then you have sometimes uh, you know, regional or municipal tax credits. So when I was the Quebec Film Commissioner, Montreal had a supplemental tax credit. Um, Abu Dhabi is more like a state tax credit. It's an emirate. So, 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 and, but one thing, though, is common across, and we see this all the time, and I'm sure my colleagues do too, is is producers, when they're look, you know, a producer is an entrepreneur. Every time is creating a new project, is creating a new company. And we see this time again, time again, 
they make the mistake of deciding where and how they're going to shoot based on the available soft money. And that's a big mistake because this is a creative process. And the project that you're producing is a creative one to entertain or inform. And if you compromise in your lo on your creative uh, aspects of the project, especially when it comes to locations and atmosphere and environment and crew and all that, you're really compromising in the integrity. And so the, the suggestion that I always give young, you know, independent producers or old, anyone, is, is you know, first, you know, first, you know, have a short list of the best locations in the world for what you need creatively, and then look at the soft money, and then start doing a business analysis of where it makes more sense financially, right? Because you can also mix and match. Uh, so, so that's what I'd say about that. Um, yeah. So, and this is for anyone that wants to answer, or everyone if you want to answer. I have a project. I think it's the most amazing film that I'm going to make. I'm coming to any of you looking for money, what do I need to come with? What, what's the preparation? You talked a little bit about a business plan, but what really is, what's the requirement? Well, if, well basically, I, if you allow me, I would like to also give a bird view, 30,000 feet view to what we have in Saudi Arabia. I mean, Saudi Arabia have been uh, accelerating the jump start of the film industry. So if we talk about the uh, funding streams uh, that are available in the country now, we can actually put them on four streams. One is the grant stream. So basically, that's the hard money that Hans was talking about. That's basically, it's a grant to support it. We have the Red Sea Fund. Uh, yesterday, we have uh, announced from the Film Commission a new version of DAO competition that will be available throughout the years uh, by four cycles. Uh, so that's a grant. It's given to a project. It could be a partial grant uh, in certain percentages. And uh, they are actually targeting DAO competition, targeting Saudi and uh, international partner, partnering up with Saudis. Uh, the Red Sea Fund is also international. The second stream we have is the incentive stream. It's basically a project that is fully financed and we're willing to shoot in Saudi Arabia and we actually giving them up to 40% in cash rebate uh, plus logistical support, which actually contribute to a lot. Uh, and the third uh, route we have is the funding was basically a loan. And we have the Cultural Development Fund that is uh, one of the biggest funds in the region. Uh, they are funding uh, not only projects, but they are also funding businesses. So if someone has a business plan to expand his operations, they want to build studios, they want to go and um, you know, break through new industries within the film industry, they actually fund project plus businesses. And then we have the private sector, which is now accelerating. Now we have a lot of companies now that are going to produce their own content and they have their own financing given that they have their own commercial uh, you know, uh, targets. In general, what we are looking for is our projects that are actually very authentic, that going to contribute to the film sector in the country. So if you look at, for example, the incentive program, if you are going to utilize below the line from, like from Saudi, the more percentages you have, the more you're going to qualify for the 40%. If you're going to um, you know, incorporate the cultural aspect of Saudi Arabia, if you have something that is related, a story that is about the culture of Saudi Arabia, it's more likely that this is going to be incentivized. Uh, for the grants, uh, we don't have a lot of requirements other than a quality project. So that's a project that is well written, well developed, it has a clear timeline and a clear budget. You submit that project. We don't really entertain, uh, we don't actually interfere in the creative process or the creative choices of any filmmaker. So when you go to the grants, it's absolutely your freedom to go and do what you want. It's going to be in an com independent committee from the commission or from, we just form them in multiple cycles. They evaluate the project. Usually the committee is formed from local, international, males and females to give a broad perspective and evaluate all the projects equally. Um, at the end of the day, we look at the industry as the building block of the industry is mainly a film, a piece of content. That's what we go and watch and get inspired by. And the people who are actually going to create that building block are creative people. So to me, to me, the way I look at it, it's a film or a product and the creative people. And everything we build is going to help a quality, con quality content and to enable the filmmakers to do better work, to have a good life work balance, and to enable them to make life as easy as possible. Now, our sector is not easy. We know that it's very hard to break through, but 
We try our best to actually be an additional uh, environment that's going to make the whole process easier for everyone. Yeah, I just want to, because there's very very similar vision of, of, of uh, both uh, countries in terms of how we're dealing with the, with the film industry, especially, uh, especially now. I, I want also to add to one level to what, what is being done, uh, is that beside the cash rebate, that, that which is considered as, a, as a, uh, a cash money, there is a one important component is the cash rebate not only for the foreign productions that comes and spend the, all, all the money uh, in, in the country, but also for the regional collaboration and for the local collaboration. This is what we do if a film with a smaller budget that comes to Jordan wants to film a story from the Arab world, then they are eligible for cash rebate. Also, if they have a, either co-director or co-producer, they are eligible for the film fund, and I'm pointing uh, to my colleague, Reem Bader, who's heading the film fund here. So those elements helps a lot developing not only the industry within one country, but within the region where we really need to focus on this. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Per, you, you, we talked a little bit earlier, and you have a number of years with your fund. Can you talk a little bit about how that's kind of evolved over the number of years that, you, that it's been in active? Uh, yeah, how it's evolved, uh, that could be a very long answer. It could, I'll try and be a, be a bit short. Uh, I mean, we've uh, grown to be more known in the industry, of course, because we, as a fund, uh, the quality of the projects we support obviously depends on the quality of the applications coming into the fund and uh, being able to travel around to festivals like here, presenting it to uh, at film markets um, has, uh, I think, uh, increased the level of the applications coming into the fund significantly. But uh, from the get-go, I'd say, like the first couple of years, it was a little bit up and down, but uh, quite quickly, because it's such a lucrative fund, it's sort of free money uh, that you can spend in your country uh, with no strings attached. Uh, so uh, quite quickly, we became popular. Uh, but we have sort of a gatekeeper in the sense that you need a Norwegian co-producer to apply to the fund. We only have one deadline each year, and uh, there's five million Norwegians uh, all across the world, or in Norway, but uh, in the whole world, we're only five million, and only so many are uh, producers. So uh, that brings a cap on the amount of applications that come in to us every year. So we have uh, actually ever since the start, uh, more than 10 years ago, we normally have are between 50 and 60 applications coming in every year, and we have uh, between six to eight grants that we hand out every year, uh, fiction and documentary, and that's been uh, quite stable. But uh, yeah, we've uh, seen the projects travel to festivals uh, internationally. Uh, I can mention a few projects from the region, uh, Kautar Benhania's uh, Beauty and the Dogs, uh, that was uh, at the Cannes Film Festival, uh, from Sudan uh, with Amjad Abu Alala, uh, You Will Die at 20, that was in Venice uh, uh, from last year, um, um, Munya Akel, uh, Costa Brava, Lebanon. Um, so, yeah, we supported quite a range of projects. Jermaine, do you have any, anything that additional to add as far as, you know, looking at it from the 30,000 foot and, you know, the, the future? Oui, merci beaucoup. Euh, ce que je voudrais dire, euh, dans des pays comme les nôtres qui sont en construction, l'existence de ce fonds-là est très important. Il permet vraiment aux créateurs de s'exprimer. Euh, je dirais que depuis que ce fonds existe en 2015, c'est un fonds vraiment relativement jeune, nous avons constaté une augmentation énorme de la production. Aujourd'hui, au Sénégal, on aura jusqu'à 150 films dans l'année qui, qui vont être tournés. Euh, au niveau de la formation, ce que nous sommes en train de faire, les résultats aussi sont importants parce que nous voulons que notre pays soit un pays de tournage, de destination. Donc, il faut outiller 
il faut mettre en place les ressources humaines. C'est ce qui nous permet de capter beaucoup de grandes de productions qui arrivent euh, au Sénégal. Mais l'État aussi est en train de travailler à avoir une fiscalité incitative euh, pour les autorisations de tournage. Pour un court métrage, vous payez euh, environ 200 euros. Ce n'est pas beaucoup d'argent. Pour un long métrage, vous payez euh, 1000 euros environ. Mais tout ça, c'est pour inciter euh, les grosses productions pour qu'elles puissent arriver. Mais le Sénégal, c'est également un pays de décor. C'est pour cela que nous avons ici au Red Sea même un stand où vous irez, il y a une vidéo qui présente un peu le Sénégal en termes de pays de décor, mais également qui, présente, qui donne également beaucoup d'informations. Et ce stand est géré par ma collaboratrice qui est là, qui est responsable de l'agence culturelle africaine, qui travaille avec nous au niveau de grands événements tels que Cannes ou autres événements que, que, où, où, nous, où nous, 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 nous sommes. Mais je voudrais dire tout simplement que nous devons continuer dans ce sens-là. Euh, C'est vrai que euh, tous les projets ne peuvent pas recevoir les subventions. Mais moi, ma conviction personnelle, c'est que euh, même les projets les moins bons euh, méritent d'être financés. Et c'est dans tout ça qu'on aura finalement quelque chose de bon. Parce que comme j'ai dit tout à l'heure, nous, nous sommes en, en construction, nous avons besoin de produire. Et il faut vraiment encourager. Encourager également euh, la mutualisation par des, des coproductions en, en allant vers beaucoup de pays euh, avec qui nous pouvons travailler et mutualiser un certain nombre de... de, de, de qui. Nous avons signé beaucoup d'accords. Il y a d'autres qui sont en discussion pour finalisation, notamment avec la Finlande, avec le Luxembourg, avec... Euh, le euh, Canada, Québec et, 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 et autres. Au niveau de l'Afrique également, il y a beaucoup de... Avec le Rwanda, on est en train de finaliser bientôt un certain nombre d'accords de, de coproduction, mais qui permettront un peu de booster tout cela, de mutualiser les moyens, mais de permettre également aux producteurs qui sont des autres pays de pouvoir venir et travailler tranquillement avec le Sénégal où nous avons l'avantage d'être... d'avoir une stabilité qui permet vraiment de tourner 365 jours sur 365 jours. Voilà. It's interesting that you bring up the co-productions. Um, I know New Jersey, our governor, signed a memorandum of understanding with India in order to create that, those co-productions. So how, how do we, and this may not be for all of you, but it's a little bit for me now, how do we make those co-productions start to happen? How, who needs to ha be in the room? Who needs to be in the room where it happens? So there's two different types of co- you can tell I'm a bureaucrat, right? <laughs> there's two different types of co-productions, official and non-official. So the official ones are signed by governments that have funds, like, like Senegal, uh, like Canada. Um, And, and those are called official co-production treaties. Otherwise, it's just a co-production. It's two, three, four producers getting together from different countries, putting their resources together, including funding, and working a project. An official co-production is a government tool which allows uh, producers of their country to benefit from their local funding system and to add that with the funding system of a producer from, from a country they choose to co-produce with. And it doesn't have to be bilateral. It can be trilateral, it can be quadripartite. I mean, in Europe now, it's not a trend, but we're starting to see a lot of co-productions with five countries, right? And that's a double-edged sword, right? Of course, you're, you're increasing your funding potential right. because you have access to these funds from different countries, but you're diluting <laughs> the cultural essence of what you're trying to do. Unless it happens to be a story which happens across those five. But there's always a point system. And a point st system is usually on above the line, so you're, where your producer, director, writer's from. Um, and the points, points in the location and the crew. And you know, so every country has its own point system. And part of a producer's job is to research that, right? So, and then within that, there's also different components of the fund itself. So in Canada, we have a development fund, pre-production fund, 
uh, production fund, post-production fund, marketing fund, and visual effects fund, right? And all these funds are selective. I don't know of any fund in the world that's automatic. All these funds are selective. Contrary to soft money, which I would say probably half the jurisdictions around the world are automatic and half are selective, right? And the selective ones are usually the ones that have a budget. So in your fiscal item, you know, either you have a budget or it's unlimited. So I don't know what it is in New Jersey. You it's, guys, a bu it's a budget. It's a budget. So, so, so either it's like California where first come first serve or it's selective. In Abu Dhabi, where our, we have a 30% fund, uh, fund tax, tax credit or cash rebate because there's no tax. So it's a 30% cash rebate, but that is automatic. There's no, fun, there's no budget, there's no fiscal item. So you come, you apply, you spend, you get your 30%. And it doesn't matter if it's $1 or $100 million, there's no cap. So there's, and that's part of your, your research job is every jurisdiction has its own structure, mechanisms, and funding levels. Do any of you or your, your organizations provide um, the resources and the training. Jermaine, you talked a little bit about training, so yes. Uh -huh. Yes, definitely. I, I, as I mentioned earlier, one of the core uh, uh, programs that we present is uh, uh, working on the training of the film industry, whether it's technical or, or uh, uh, creative, not only for Jordanians, but also for the Arabs. We have several programs that are specialized within the script writing, um, acting, um, and now we're moving into TV series uh, because this is where every, every, everybody's heading. Uh, and we, start, we work with the filmmakers, and some of them are, um, are in this uh, room, from the development to, to the pitch of, of their projects to uh, pitch it to one of, of the uh, production companies or platforms and so on. This is, this is what made Jordan also very famous within its crew because most of the crew had the proper training for a long time. We've been, we've been there um, uh, officially as a film commission since 20 years. That is giving also a great opportunity for, for uh, people to, to, to learn. Also, I want to mention one uh, uh, quick uh, element. We, since we're talking about, uh, since we're talking about uh, soft money, soft money is something that we are trying to not only benefit to the, the international production, but also to, to the local and the regional. And actually, if I may add also on the training and the development regard, uh, when the Film Commission uh, you know, in the Ministry of Culture of Saudi Arabia was founded in 2020, the first department that was activated and was in full-fledged was the Talent Development Department. This is the first thing we kicked. We kicked training programs. And uh, we designed the training programs to really accommodate people who have absolutely no idea about what the industry is to actually explore themselves all the way to people who are actually will experience and they have a long experience and just to take their craft to the next level. So we try to design the program to be inclusive. And every time we actually exceed our targets, I mean, this year we have a target of 1,000 to train. We have reached a target of 1,500. And that's in every aspect of the filmmaking process, whether it is writing, development, directing, and producing. And even on set training, we had people who have actually worked on the set of international productions outside the country and inside the country uh, or through shadowing programs. Because we believe no matter how much theory you might have, unless you go and apply your craft on the ground, that's the only way to learn. So uh, in that regard, uh, it's, it's, it's something that we are not going to stop. We are going to continue. We are going to double and even triple our effort in the training because it is, as I mentioned earlier, the building block of the industry. It's the creatives and uh, also the grants. I mean, if you go, for example, Dow Competition Grant in the previous installment, uh, although we supported people with the grant money, there was a development sort of, you know, resources attached to that. So we gave them script doctors, we gave them access to people who can help them develop the idea as part of the grant that just goes as part of the package. You know, that's really important because when I was talking about, you know, the creative process and how to choose your location before you look at the, 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 the soft money or the hard money, um, you know, I talked about locations, I talked about infrastructure, but also the soft infrastructure, the crew, and the crew's depth of crew and quality of the crew. And that makes a huge difference too, right? If you're producing a $2 million 
documentary or, or short, it's going to be a, a very different requirement than a $20 million feature. And, you know, that's, a, that's really an element. The produ and there's only one organization in every jurisdiction that can help you with that. It's the Film Commission, right? Because they understand the crew depth, the quality, who's there, the vendors, you know, the gaps. Um, you know, and I'll give you a great example. We just finished um, a, f a $25 million Bollywood blockbuster called Vikram Vida in, in, with Ritik Roshan in, in Abu Dhabi. And it's like, you're thinking, well, you know, why would Bollywood come and shoot in Abu Dhabi when it's probably 40% more expensive, mm -hmm. right? So obviously the rebate helps, 30% brings it down, so maybe 10% more expensive, but it's still 10% more expensive. And it's because it was a massive shoot and they needed like 2,500 extras. Well, the, you know, because of the relationship I had with Yash Raj, the, I mean Reliance Entertainment, the producer, they knew that there's about two and a half million Indians living in Abu Dhabi and who love Bollywood. I mean, no Indian on the, on the planet does not love Bollywood. And so they actually saved, well, creatively, it was in their backyard, so they didn't have to pay for lodging, didn't have to pay for transport. So the creative solution that they found actually turned out to be a financial solution as well. And that's a great example of the production process. The, the question, were they eligible for the cash rebate? <laughs> or, yeah, well, because they live there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, that's the, that's the point, is, 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 that's the point. So, you know, when you're doing that creative uh, landscaping, you know, what, what, you know, what you guys are talking about, the crew depth and quality crew is also a crucial uh, component. Mm -hmm when a producer is trying to you know, decide how and where he's going to do his movie. That's and I mean, we had also a similar experience, but it had another dimension I would love to actually share. Uh, when uh, the um, Desert Warrior, it was a fantasy epic. It was shot in the north. And obviously, they wanted to have a lot of extras, so the same thing. Now, the north of Saudi Arabia is kind of one of the remote areas, the outskirts of the country. And having a project of that magnitude in their area, they had, uh, I think, 600 extras. We noticed that there is a spike in interest of filmmaking courses, filmmaking academia, and more people there are enrolling in our training programs more than before. So I think the existence of these projects that shot in either major cities or smaller cities, it inspires a new breed of filmmakers that would be surprising you over the short term. So I think this is key, and this is really important. And also, it stimulates the local economy. I mean, in the north, the whole area actually just flourished. Everybody was busy whether it's transport, whether it's catering, and also hotels. So I think this is another aspect that it actually empower a lot of uh, small to medium-sized businesses that might be outside the film sector itself. And this is key as well. And it's, this is part of, you know, it's actually one of the joys that in our sector that when you do something and you just see this unexpected result. Although we know that happens, but when you see them happening in the ground, it really brings joy that we are going in the right direction. No, absolutely. I think we are going to have some time for Q&A. I'm not sure who's taking my microphone. Okay. So if you have questions, just raise your hand. Thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciated this. It's my first time in such a big festival. I'm a participant in the short competition. My question is um, for Mr. Hans. So my future uh, film that I'm developing, it's, uh, it's, it's supposed to be in Abu Dhabi. And it's, uh, I'm not gonna speak about it a lot, but uh, it's about my father who lived 40 years there and witnessed the history of Abu Dhabi. So it, it helps the, the culture uh, of Abu Dhabi. So my question is, uh, when I go to Abu Dhabi, how can I contact producers, co-producers? What's the, how can I go? Thank you. Uh, okay, that's, wow, that, that's a good question because there's so many elements to it. Um, so the first thing is how can you get the help you need? So, you know, uh, every film commission is structured differently. Uh, so there, there's, there's a board, there's an organization called the Association of Film Commissioners International, obviously based in Hollywood. And I was in a board of directors for five years. And so I was lucky enough to see how all these national, regional, state, and, and municipal film commissions are structured. 
And because of that, in Abu Dhabi, we structured a very comprehensive film commission, one of the biggest in the world. There's about 40 of us now. And we, but we have five main service streams, production, rebates, locations, but one of them, to answer your question, is called client service. And so we manage the, um, the industry directory uh, database, which is an online directory, for freelancers and vendors. So when you're coming, you know, the first thing you're looking for in the situation you explained is a fixer or maybe a local line producer, somebody who's going to help you. So, you know, we'll take your script, your budget, say, or, you know, say, okay, this is what you need. It's feature or TV or something else. And we will recommend. And a good film commission will do that because like, like the locations, like the rebates, like the crew, nobody knows their industry better than a film commission. The second aspect to your question is it's, it's because it's not just a, you're not just talking about a foreign service production, you're talking about a local production, right? And so all of a sudden you're talking, and by the way, for most funds, the hard money, they exist as government money, but they exist to promote the local culture, to advocate, to stimulate, to promote, and export the local culture, right? And so depending on your project, you know, uh, the, the, you should talk to us also about co-production possibilities, very different than service productions, right? Because it is an Emirati story and you only talked 10 seconds, you gave it 10 second elevator pitch, but it sounded pretty interesting. Anyone else? Here we go. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Je suis désolé, je veux parler en français parce que je maîtrise le français mieux que, que d'autres langues. Ça ne vous dérange pas, bien sûr. Euh, voilà, enfin, euh, je suis Monsieur Akram Zahaba, euh, je suis réalisateur, producteur algérien français. Euh, je suis content déjà d'être ici avec vous et d'écouter ce que vous nous donnez comme plus pour nous comme de producteurs ou comme des scénaristes ou réalisateurs. Ma question, ça sera plus simple. Euh, je pense que chaque année, il y a des, des aides à par rapport à la production pour les films. Et euh, je pense, si on accepte une production, c'est-à-dire le scénario, il est bon et c'est un scénario qui doit être produit. Est-ce que vous avez un euh, agenda par, par, presque chaque année que vous avez un sujet, des sujets à, à accepter Par exemple, moi, l'année la, passée, j'ai envoyé mon film à, à la commission. Et après, j'avais une réponse de négative que voilà, le film n'était pas pris. Et euh, j'ai posé une question, est-ce que c'est par rapport au scénario Est-ce que ce n'est pas le sujet qu'ils ont basé cette année pour l'aider à, à la production, à le développement euh, Vous basez sur quelle, euh, quelle structure exactement pour accepter euh, de produire ou d'aider pour la production ou la réécriture ou l'aide à l'écriture voilà, et, et quels critères, je crois Exactement. Ouais, c'est à moi. D'accord, ok. Je vais vous parler en arabe ou en arabe Ok. Ou en anglais. Ok, je vais faire en anglais. Well, um, thanks for, for your question. Um, as, as I mentioned, the film fund at the Film Commission is considered as a local fund, not a regional or international fund. It's, uh, the, the main purpose of it is to support Jordanian filmmakers. However, through the film fund, you can, we can work on something called co-production. And the co-production element is if you have either a director or producer or both Jordanian co-producers with you, and to shoot part of the film in the country, 50% 50, 50 of the film to, to, uh, to be uh, in the country. We do not get at all in, in terms of uh, content if you're coming to film the country and we, 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 don't do, we don't do evaluation or censorship for the film if you're going to come to a film in Jordan. However, if you are applying to the fund, it is always a subject of a, a committee, an independent committee that usually are not from the film commission. We hire people, we, we ask people or hire people who are within the film industry from several parts of the um, of the Arab world and international 
so that they can look at the uh, uh, project. So I don't know why uh, your project was not uh, elect, uh, yani, uh, most probably because you, you presented it as Algerian uh, project. But as a co-production, definitely there is a good opportunity and not only benefiting from the uh, film fund as a co-producer, uh, but also benefiting from the uh, uh, regional uh, cash rebate. I hope I answered your question. Also, Reem, as, uh, as I mentioned, is the head of the film fund. You can, um, she can give you more information after the session. But, I mean, you know, to help you, uh, you know, Telefilm Canada, we administer $80 million in production funds every year. Yes, you're right. Every year there is a flavor of the month. There is a certain genre that they want to encourage, but they'll never advertise it. So your best bet is to bring those people for coffee, you know, get, get to know them and get some inside information because that's never advertised. Is it clear? Anyone? Anyone else? All right. We have just a, a, the last few minutes. Anyone for anything closing, any closing remarks or advice that you want to give to our filmmakers out here? There's no more questions? No more questions. You're kidding. We're, you answered everything. We're that boring, guys. <laughs> they all have money or? <laughs> oh, there we go. There we go. There's a brave soul. <laughs> We need to keep this going a little bit. Yeah. I'm uh, Serge uh, Akel. I'm from uh, Lebanon and France. I uh, worked a lot in uh, promoting uh, Lebanese cinema in France through different projects, especially uh, establishing the first Lebanese pavilion at the Cannes Film Festival and creating the first location guide for Lebanon. Today I'm a consultant and I work in uh, uh, different sectors. Uh, my question is uh, to the representative of uh, Senegal, because it's interesting to, to see you here. Uh, we are, uh, and I'm very happy to see that uh, the Red Sea Film Festival is uh, programming films from West Africa and from Africa. And it's, it's basically a cultural thing, a religious thing, and it's uh, uh, beyond geography. So it's very interesting to see because with France, there is a connection. With Lebanon, there is a cultural connection through Francophonie. And so I wanted to, to ask you uh, how you feel uh, the development of Senegal cinema is going to uh, promote regional uh, uh, West African cinema, but also co-productions beyond the usual co-productions with France uh, towards other countries like maybe Saudi Arabia, maybe uh, Middle Eastern countries, and beyond. Je vous remercie. Euh, je disais au début ici que l'État du Sénégal est en train de travailler à installer une véritable industrie cinématographique. Euh, pour cela, il y a un certain nombre de mécanismes ou de stratégies à développer. Il y a ce mécanisme de, de, de financement, il y a d'autres mécanismes concernant le développement d'infrastructures euh, qui est en train également de se, de se mettre en place avec des salles de cinéma ou de, 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 de niveau euh, mondial. Nous en avons inauguré il n'y a pas longtemps avec le partenariat de Pathé, mais aussi d'entreprises de, 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 sénégalaises comme Telium, qui vient d'inaugurer euh, le cinéma, si plaza, mais c'est cinéma, parce que c'est en bord de mer, on a utilisé le mot si pour la mer, et cinéma, où nous avons inauguré également des salles euh, le, le, le mois dernier. Euh, nous sommes en train d'encourager également l'installation de structures de post-production. Euh, il y a le centre Yeninga, euh, initié par Alain Gomis, qui a été étalon du Yeninga deux fois l'étalon du Yeninga. C'est le grand prix qui est décerné au FESPACO et qui est un Sénégalais, mais qui a mis en place une structure de post-production. 
de sorte qu'aujourd'hui les films tournés peuvent être faits euh, sur place. Nous avons également, l'État du Sénégal porte un grand projet de cité du cinéma où toute la chaîne de, de, du cinéma sera euh, développée avec des studios de tournage, avec une cinémathèque, avec un centre de formation et, et tout vraiment cet écosystème que nous sommes en train de, de, de développer. Maintenant, nous ne pouvons pas le faire tout seul parce que nous n'avons pas ces moyens-là. C'est pour cela que nous allons vers d'autres partenaires. Et je disais que nous développons beaucoup d'accords de coproduction. Avec la France, on a révisé en marge du festival de Cannes l'accord qui nous liait. Et cet accord euh, nous per permet, disons, aux producteurs sénégalais d'avoir euh, une exonération sur la prise de part de production. Avant, c'était de 80-20%. Nous sommes passés à 90-10%. Parce que ce qui permettait à nos producteurs qui n'ont pas beaucoup d'argent d'entrer en production avec d'autres producteurs, parce que plus le budget est élevé, euh, plus c'était difficile pour nos producteurs d'avoir, euh, de prendre des parts et de revendiquer la nationalité également du film. Nous avons dans ces accords de coproduction négocié de sorte que nos langues nationales fassent, soient éligibles dans les accords de production. Que je tourne un film en Wolof, nous avons présenté il n'y a pas longtemps, euh, hier, Banel et Adama, euh, qui est en Working Progress. Et c'est un film également où nous avons mis de l'argent. L'année dernière, ici au Red Sea, on avait eu euh, le film Astel. C'est un film aussi où nous avons mis de l'argent. Aujourd'hui, dans l'essentiel des grands festivals qui se tournent au monde, nous avons une présence du Sénégal par des, 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 par des films. Mati Diop a obtenu euh, le grand prix du jury à Cannes. Euh, voilà, il y a le film de Omar Sy, Tirailleur, où nous avons mis de l'argent également, mais également des jeunes. Au niveau des jeunes, un peu partout, à Toronto ou à, à Montréal, où vraiment tous, nous avons chaque fois des productions qui sont, qui, sont, qui, sont, qui sont présentes et le Sénégal est présent. Mais le Sénégal veut développer son industrie, mais dans un ensemble, dans un ensemble en partenariat avec, euh, avec, avec des pays et des pays comme le Liban également. Euh, nous sommes en train d'explorer en tout cas tous les pays. Et je suis heureux de, de partager ce plateau avec euh, ce bon monde. Et je vous dis tout de suite que je vais vous envoyer mes producteurs. <rire> Ils viendront voir ce qu'il y a chez vous. Et on essaiera de voir ce que nous pouvons faire ensemble. Ensemble. Et c'est comme ça que les choses doivent se, 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 se passer. Merci. And our last question for the day. Hi, my name is Ias Yunus. I'm an actor. I'm a Jordanian actor based in Los Angeles. Um, I recently um, launched a startup. It's a platform that helps casting in the region overall, whether it's for talent, also for crew member, performers, everyone. And my question is mainly for Hans and Mr. Abdel Jalil. Um, what structures uh, have you established in order to find the best people that you have in the region, in your countries and the region, and ways to develop them? And following that will be how can I help in, 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 your, uh, in developing them and help be, the casting be more effective? As resources. As a resource, sorry. As a, yeah, as a resource in terms of the platform itself, not as a casting agency, but giving more structure in a way. Yeah, it's a search and management tool. Host first. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, basically what we did is um, all of our training programs were simply open call. So we started with that, uh, just to give everybody an equality of opportunity. We didn't want to be selective. We want to everyone to have the same uh, opportunity, the same access as everyone else. But uh, then uh, we tried later on to de design programs that are targeting specific experience and a specific background or specific niche market. So uh, I can give you like a little secret now. Uh, one of the things that we are trying to work on now is to actually go and create an startup mindset and film business. This is not something we don't see much of it in the Middle East. I think there are a lot there to go. But 
in order to have people who are actually going to solve problem technically, creatively, from an IT perspective, uh, you need to actually give them the mindset of a startup. So is that even something we start? If we do that, we are going to target the people who have that experience, who have that inclination. Uh, so in a sense, our policy is to have an open call for everyone. And after that, we look at our, our experience and design specific programs that target the sub-segment of these groups and take them further and further and further. And the more we discover people, the more we're going to design tailored programs to the, for them specifically. Uh, if you look at, in general, all over the world, if you have someone who is a DB for 10 years, uh, how much you can train this guy? I mean, mostly they are good. Uh, what we do is we're going to give, uh, give them a perspective from someone who has been directing for 30 years. So that's something new for you. Go take your craft to the next level. And that's something we are now actively pursuing. We, are, we, we don't mind doing a program that only five people attend, the top five DBs in the country or the top five editors of the country. Uh, because you know, throughout the journey of a film, I'm sure all of you are way better than us in this, you talk to a thousand people from every aspect. The editor have a perspective on the, on the film, the colorist have a perspective. So the more dialogue we have, I think there is opportunity to learn, even if you go for 40, 50 years of experience in film. And there is nothing better than listening to Martin Scorsese talking about cinema. I think we all, of, all of us are inspired by him. Just look at the learning spirit he have. That's what actually makes us all tick. Uh, yeah, just to compliment what Abdul Jalil said. So, I, you know, I think he, he said, he gave a good overview of the training side in terms of the management and platform side. So, um, you know, what we did, and I would, you know, I was talking about the online directory, the database we manage. I mean, you know, when you're developing an industry, you can do two ways. You start with the service production, gain the, the experience from the transfer of expertise and skill sets that way, or, and that's the way we did in Abu Dhabi, or like in Quebec, where we, we started with the indigenous, the local production. We, we created an immensely strong local language, French language, um, uh, you know, uh, film ecosystem. And then we benefited from the pr production service. So either way, but, but if you're doing the, f the first way, production service, you want to create, uh, you really want to spend your resources, not everything, but you want to concentrate on your crew, because those are the guys that will make the production in your jurisdiction. The, every, from the first AD down to the focus puller, passing through the set designer and the production accountant. And, and so, and so, because the tax, the the cash, re, the tax credits, you know, are only eligible to your local spend, including your local crew. There's not much use at that point in your development strategy to concentrate on talent, and especially actors, because all these foreign productions, they're bringing them in. They're bringing their actors in, they're bringing their directors in, they're bringing their, often their heads of department, their cinematographer. However, you know, when you're at the development stage where now you're building your indigenous production capacity, or perhaps you've started with that, then it makes sense. Because you can't make a local production without that above the line without skilled writers, skilled directors, and skilled actors. So it really depends on where you are. Then the last thing I'll say about this is you need critical mass. To justify a platform like you're talking, if you have five actors in your country, probably not worth spending a platform, you know? But if you have a critical mass, then it's something you should start talking to jurisdictions like us about. All right. With that, we are finishing. To all my panelists, thank you so much. It has been an absolute pleasure to be here with you. And I hope you stay for the rest of the sessions.